he says, okay, good morning, good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, effective methods for repairing transformer and uh, circuit breaker oil leaks and uh, SF6 leaks. And uh, the, the, the topic for the program is uh, reliability is the buzzword you might say. And obviously if your equipment is leaking fluids or gases, it will impact its uh, reliability. So um, first off, let's talk about transformer oil leaks. And you got pictures here of a couple of transformers that um, are leaking rather nicely, you might say. That one on the left um, has, uh, was, was leaking from virtually every orifice up top. Uh, every flange and every surface up top was, was leaking like crazy on this, uh, on this fine transformer. The one on the right, um, not as many leaks but uh, has got some issues. And uh, obviously there's um, a bit exasperated. I believe in the photograph, the environment may have had some, some um, uh, contamination, particulate contamination or something that was staining that oil substantially darker than, than normal, but it doesn't make for a very pretty sight. So a um, couple good examples of leaking transformers. A couple other uh, transformer leaks. Uh, the access hatch on the left uh, has got a gasket behind that flange, which uh, has a tendency to uh, uh, fail, go bad, leak, bit of a major chore to um, do a routine replacement on that gasket uh, without taking the oil down. So uh, that's another issue that, that uh, commonly occurs. The picture on the left, this is my favorite, where's Waldo kind of picture. What is that thing you're looking at there? Um, it's a sudden pressure relay, fault pressure relay, sudden pressure relay that's mounted on top of a transformer tank um, on this specific unit. And you can see the flange, I believe my cursor, my arrow will point here. You can see the flange at the top here. Um, customer had made an attempt to uh, stop that leak with some sort of external e epoxy application or something. Needless to say, it didn't work very well, as depicted by the nice puddle up on top of the transformer. Remember both of these, you're going to see them again later on. Here. So um, how do you normally address your transformer oil leaks? Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures. You drain and regasket everything, and uh, simple enough uh, proposed solution, but when you think about the logistics of doing that, I'm certain some of you have, have been through that exercise. Pretty major event when you have to drain the transformer, you need tankers, you need aerial lift devices, you need cranes, you need people just to pull everything apart, put gaskets back on, and then uh, put it all back together again and hope that everything is properly sealed up when you're back in business. So what are some of your options uh, when it comes to dealing with leaks in, in transformers? Um, first of all, you can do nothing. And there's no cost there, no repair cost there. Uh, you're gonna have some issues with environmental oil releases, uh, unsightly appearance of equipment, and more and more regulations, both state and federal, are getting more stringent about releasing fluids into the environment. Uh, oil has always been a bit of an issue, and I know some of the states have been very, very strict now on SF6 gas. So, um, and it's interesting, I've put this poster up, this chart up, for other presentations and I've had people pipe up and say, do nothing, yeah, that's what we do. So I don't know if they're serious or if it's just flipping comments from the, the crowd, but um, evidently there are, and, and there's, there's a lot of leakers out there. So evidently there are people that are really not spending a lot of time on their leaks. Transformer replacements, your next option. Advantage there, woo woo, you got a nice brand new state-of-the-art transformer and you can restart your uh, remaining life cycle your maintenance cycles and everything on that asset. Of course, the disadvantage of a transformer replacement is it's um, pretty labor intensive, extended outage time, uh, and the cost is, uh, is, is massive. Not only the labor involved and the equipment involved, but also the, uh, the, the, the cost of purchasing the, the transformer itself. Another common practice, regasket replacing leaking components. Advantage here is you're going to restore your transformer gasketing to a like new condition. Again, it's labor intensive, extended outage time, typically a pretty high cost option. And um, uh, sometimes, depending on the unit, 
you still may not have a 100% solution. Remember that point. I'm going to show you something else on that later on here this morning also. Um, online leak seal is the next term here. And uh, your advantage is there. You're going to repair your gaskets to, uh, to a like new condition. Oftentimes, these repairs can be performed with the transformer in service. Typically, the repairs are performed in a very short cycle time frame measured in hours uh, or days versus a typical regasketing could run weeks or longer. Typically online leak seal is a, um, a, a pretty lower cost option compared to, uh, to the others. The only disadvantage, and I put kind of quotes around that term there, uh, is that you've got repaired transformer gaskets versus uh, being restored to a like new condition. Or in reality, the, um, the um, gasket leak seal repair technique actually offers up a, a gasket that has the same properties and the same lifespan as a, uh, as a more traditional OEM type gasket material. So this online leak seal is what we're gonna focus on in, uh, in today's presentation. Here. So what is that? Well, this is an alternative oil leak repair technique uh, whereby a uh, means of drilling and injecting a sealing compound into the leaking transformer gasket groove uh, on a leaking flange. So here's a nice photograph of that work in progress using the, uh, the, this drill and inject method. Um, it looks simple enough and more details as we drill into this a little bit further, but uh, finding that that gasket groove and pumping a liquid sealant compound into that gasket uh, groove, replace the failed gasket, oftentimes done with the transformer in service. In this picture here, uh, this repair, was being performed with that transformer humming in this technician's left ear. And here is a, a nice little graphic representation of what that drill and inject technique looks like, um, where we're uh, uh, injecting the sealant compound into that, that um, gasket groove uh, on the, this flange that's leaking. And you notice that, that the effort is made to, to drill and penetrate into that gasket groove as far away from the transformer main tank as possible because the sealant's going to flow into that, that groove um, and you want to assure it doesn't get um, introduced into the main tank. Here's a nice picture of a, uh, a drill and inject in progress. You can see the, uh, the injector valve in place, sealant uh, hose coupled up to the, uh, the little hydraulic pump to pump the sealant in in about the 12 o'clock position on this, um, this eight bolt flange. And the process of doing this repair, you can see the sealant is, is coming out of another drill and inject hole that's been drilled at about the um, one o'clock position, likewise at the 11 o'clock position. And there's another one that's part of the process down here about the, um, I guess we'd call that the, the seven or eight o'clock position perhaps going around. So this is, this is what the work looks like. Another view, uh, the injector valves are in place on another uh, gasket groove uh, on, on another uh, transformer radiator installation here. Uh, there are some bushings that uh, have the appropriate gasket groove that we can do the drill and inject repair technique on those. I have not seen many of these repairs in my tenure of supporting the TDS company personally myself, but uh, obviously it's been done because we've got a photograph depicting it here. So depending on the type of bushing, yes, it is a potential solution. Now, as I mentioned earlier too, many repairs on the lower end of uh, transformer radiators and pumps um, and piping can be, form can be performed with the transformer in service. Uh, you saw that in the, um, the, the early on picture there. And, um, here is a view of um, uh, uh, one of these flapper valves that uh, we would be performing a repair on. You can see the, uh, the black arrow pointing at the, the gasket groove where uh, uh, the, the sealant would be uh, injected in to replace that failing gasket. In addition, on these flappers or butterflies, we can inject the sealant into the, um, the valve stem. You see the air, orange arrow pointing at uh, the valve stem area because uh, oftentimes the oil will migrate its way up into that stem 
and uh, we can successfully uh, pump the sealant compound in there to um, uh, arrest those leaks also. Uh, the sealant is a soft enough material that will not uh, stop that, that valve from operating. It's, it's soft enough that you can continue to operate the valve without, um, you won't lose its functionality by applying this repair. Um, here is another uh, four bolt uh, flapper that uh, we're, we're injecting into the valve stem. This is a nice picture to depict this repair because there's no radiator in the way. Uh, it's just a bland, blind flange here. Uh, and it gives you a nice view of, of how we can inject the sealant into that, uh, that valve stem. There. Here we're going into the, um, uh, the valve stem as well as the, uh, the gasket flange with two different uh, injector valves uh, in place uh, on this work in progress. Uh, this picture here um, is, is, is interesting. It's an older one from uh, repairs done in the past, but the technicians had identified where that gasket groove was by scoring that, that black line um, onto the, the, uh, the flange itself. And you can see the holes that they've drilled are away from that flange on the outer side of that, um, uh, that gasket groove to, um, to facilitate the repair. Now leaks on the upper end of radiators and bushing flanges usually require an outage for safe work clearances. Uh, but as I mentioned too, they can be performed in just a couple of days and there's really no wait time prior to restore. So um, up on top, and you saw this picture before, to, uh, to repair the, these uh, turret flanges. And plus, uh, if we're gonna uh, attack these, uh, these radiator flanges up here with the drill and inject technique, um, we're gonna need outage for uh, safe work clearance to, to get personnel up there within the vicinity of the energized conductor. So transformer out of service and grounded for, for this work to, to be done. But again, like I say, only for a, for a short period. Uh, <clears throat> the external clamp technique, we'll talk about that now. This is the other um, method that's commonly used, whereby we, we fabricate a precision clamp of, of uh, either machined or cast aluminum uh, to uh, put an external gasket, you might say, around a leaking flange and um, utilize the existing bolts to hold the clamp in place plus the pressure of the clamp. Here's a, a nice photograph of, of one of our external clamps uh, that, that's uh, being prepped and admired by one of our technicians there uh, prior to uh, installation, probably on a, a circuit breaker uh, bushing, a high voltage 345 kV circuit breaker bushing perhaps. Uh, external clamp, <clears throat> and uh, you can see here, uh, a up close view of one being prepped for installation on the left hand side. Uh, the black rubber is merely a, uh, a cushioning type material to help uh, keep the aluminum from, from scratching, scoring either the porcelain or the steel, depending on the, uh, the installation. And then the sealant compound is pumped into this cavity down the center between those two black grooves, those two black uh, cushions through the uh, um, the holes that are drilled uh, and tapped in the clamp. Uh, another uh, cross-section view of, of just another style clamp for another installation to, to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. In addition, it depicts that, that the clamps are, are custom made to accommodate whatever uh, component is, uh, is being sealed. And like mentioned, these external clamps are fabricated from uh, um, cast aluminum and finished to precise dimensions to fit the specific component that's leaking. Here's a completed clamp installation on a, uh, a bushing. This I believe is actually an older SF6 gas breaker, but you can see the nice clean installation here, effectively sealing that, that surface between the porcelain and the steel on this oh, bushing. Fuck. The um, access hatches that I talked about earlier, um, Usual technique is to apply an external clamp to, uh, to these type of components on transformers. Um, and, and again, as the, the techs are pumping the sealant compound into this one that, that's bolted into place here, 
very likely this transformer was in service while this repair was going on because uh, they're down at ground level away from the energized components and uh, the exercise of putting this in place would not uh, impact the operation of the transformer nor are the <clears throat> technicians in a um, hazardous condition due to um, uh, you know, being close to the live components. Now here is uh, another butterfly valve. This one's got the open face flanges on it though, uh, as depicted in the both pictures here. So the drill and inject is not a good solution for um, this specific uh, 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 flange here. So um, solution here was to fabricate actually a fairly large three-part clamp. And we're showing here this clamp in the uh, fabrication process with one of the, the uh, machining outfits that we use. Uh, Computer-aided design that was uh, loaded into their, their CNC machine to fabricate the components of this clamp. Uh, pictures of the work in progress, the finished clamp being admired by the machine shop sitting on a pallet there before they shipped it out to us. And here's the clamp once we received it in the field. And uh, you can see they've started to prep this by putting the, the black rubber in on, on these two components of the clamp. Here's the clamp in place and uh, all bolted down and uh, just waiting for the sealant compound to be pumped in through all the uh, access holes that have been drilled in the various uh, cavities and sections on, uh, on this clamp. Here's our um, sudden pressure relay again. <clears throat> and um, I'll show you the solution for, uh, for this leak, which was to fabricate a clamp uh, that goes around the base of that sudden pressure relay. Obviously it's installed in, a, in such a fashion that the functionality of the relay is not compromised. It's still gonna do its job of monitoring of uh, uh, pressure surges on this transformer to um, uh, protect that transformer. But the, but the leak has been arrested. Uh, a couple different shots of that. Um, what's interesting here too, is I noticed when I was going over these again the other day, is there's a little bit of snow on some of the components here. So this work was done in colder weather. So it, it demonstrates the fact that, that um, this repair can be done uh, regardless if it's uh, hot or cold, um, the more limiting factor is the, um, um, the comfort for the technicians doing the work, uh, you might say. But, but this was a nice moderately moderate winter day up in beautiful northern Illinois and uh, more than adequate for them to do a fine job repairing this leak. Another view of this one, and you can see the injector valve in place pumping the sealant compound into, into this clamp. And um, here's one of the access openings here with a, with a pipe uh, plug in place, not fully threaded down, but uh, in the process, they're gonna monitor watching the sealant compound come out of that as, uh, as they continue to pump it in. Uh, so these custom clamps are created based on measurements taken in the field. Uh, we'll make up a, a measure up diagram like you see on the left here. And uh, the technicians will offer up the, uh, the values that are depicted on the various fill in the blanks on there. The A, B, C, D, E, F, blah, blah, uh, dimensions. And then plus the, uh, the underlines for the, uh, the ODs and some of those components there so that we can get the clamp uh, designed and fabricated. And once measurements are, are returned to the design engineer and the fab shop, Oftentimes these clamps are fabricated with a pretty quick turnaround. And if need be, we can get them there. Uh, oftentimes within 24 hours of, of um, receiving all the information, taking the measurements. Now the sealant itself um, has got the same durometric properties as the uh, nitrile rubber uh, gaskets that are commonly used uh, as OEM on, uh, on transformers, et cetera. So um, you know, it's, it's the same. Repairs are made with only one type of sealing compound. Uh, so the technicians in the field don't have to be chemists, as I like to say. Uh, since we're only dealing with transformer oil, uh, nitrogen, SF6 gas, the sealant that's used does not react with any of those materials. Uh, the sealant cures uh, in a matter of hours and the apparatus can be returned to service essentially immediately after repairs are complete. 
if we have taken an outage to do uh, work that's up top, um, we do like to leave it out of service overnight, let things fully cure up, and uh, we'll come back and do a, a quick look-see on the transformer to make sure everything is good before we uh, release it and give it back to the utility and return it to normal operating service. Uh, if the sealant does get into the transformer tank or oil-filled cavity of a bushing, it does not react adversely with transformer oil, nitrogen, or SF6. Uh, other interesting aspect, this little picture here, uh, a little bit of sealant compound is dribbling out of that um, injector valve uh, uh, that's in, in place where they're going into that, that, um, uh, that valve stem. And you can see the consistency in its uncured state. It's ready to be injected state. It's got the consistency of like honey or uh, pancake syrup. It's, it's um, pretty runny and very easily handled in its, um, in its working state. Uh, and if the repaired component <clears throat> does require disassembly or removal, uh, the cured sealing compound is always soft and pliable and it, and it never hardens. Here's a picture of a, uh, of a bushing where half the clamp has been removed and you can see the sealant doesn't have to be scraped out of the clamp. The clamp comes off nice and clean and um, it can be easily cut away with just a pocket knife and it's soft and pliable. And uh, um, so, so doesn't doesn't really encumber your equipment on a permanent basis, just just to, to stop the leak. Uh, what you're looking at there, what's that funny little white meshy stuff? Well, it's just a piece of fiberglass mesh that was put around the perimeter of that uh, uh, that bushing, just to help cushion and comfort, uh, protect and uh, and keep that clamp from inching up as the sealant compound was put in. So again, that can be just cut away without leaving any any re, uh, residual on that bushing. A couple of little case studies. Uh, this is a um, LTC compartment flange on a 138 to 12 transformer, that uh, open face flange that we uh, measured, designed, fabricated, and installed a, a clamp to, uh, to arrest the leaks in this flange. Um, Transformer was installed in 1993. I don't have the exact date of manufacture, but I am of the impression that this was probably its initial installation. New transformer was an, installed at this site um, in, in 1993 vintage. Um, and we were invited to, to make this repair form. This is just two photographs of the same clamp, uh, just showing you it, it was in four pieces. You can see the ears between the four pieces um, for its design and, and um, um, fabrication. And once it was put up in place, uh, effectively enclosing that, that um, open face flange, in addition to the clamp and filling that with sealant compound, we also put um, hollowed out injector nuts, we call them on the back side of um, the nuts and bolts that hold this, uh, this flange together. Take all those out one at a time. And that way we can pump the sealant compound into the area around the threads on those um, bolts holding that flange together. Because once the, the, uh, the clamp is arresting the leak in that open face flange, now the oil is gonna migrate to those bolt holes. So we'll, we'll pump sealant compound told towards those to uh, keep it from, um, uh, leaking out through those. Radiator drain valves, uh, another common area of leaks, nuisance type leaks, I like to call them, on, on transformer radiators. And uh, we can fabricate a, uh, a, an aluminum clamp. It's in a, in a box type of configuration. We'll enclose around that stem uh, so that the valve handle is still operational um, and add a, uh, an extender little nipple with a cap on it to, to allow that, that valve to continue to be fully functional uh, in, its, in its repaired state. Oftentimes your uh, radiator will have just plugs as opposed to valves. And uh, we have fabricated clamps to go over those, um, those plugs, just a little cylindrical uh, um, hollowed out um, aluminum um, clamp 
that can be uh, that can be uh, uh, molded in place to, to arrest those kind of leaks. Radiator fins, uh, the, these flat fins in particular with the stiffeners uh, have a propensity to develop leaks where the stiffeners are welded in place. Um, and we can fabricate a clamp to, uh, to, to, to arrest those kind of leaks. And I know the other radiator here, it's a tube style radiator um, that uh, has got a clamp around just one of the tubes uh, that had, uh, had failed and developed a leak. And you can see where the sealant compound can get pumped in. And here's the clamp that goes on to um, where that, that stiffener is. Um, just a C-shaped type clamp uh, that we pump with sealant compound, threaded rod <clears throat> that hold it in place to just a backing plate on the opposite side of that, um, that radiator fin. Um, and this, this clamp is rather weathered. So my interpretation of that is that this thing has been in service and in, in, in this repair has been in place for quite some time, effectively containing this leak. <clears throat> um, on this on this radiator, uh, oil pumps on transformers. Uh, your larger transformers have got a number of pumps for uh, moving the oil around to facilitate the cooling. Um, this utility finally reached out to us to, uh, to to do some pump repairs for them. You can see something's been leaking for quite some time beneath this transformer with all the stains in the drain rock there. So. Um, we were able to uh, fabricate clamps looking like this here to, uh, to contain those leaks uh, on those two pumps. A um, couple things to point out. This transformer was definitely in service when this repair was facilitated. And you can see shortly after this work was completed, the, the flow gauge is showing that oil is flowing through this pump right now. So um, there was no transformer outage. They may have shut the pumps down as they fixed them one at a time. But here, as we're in a completed state, uh, everything's back in service, pumps are running. Um, evidently, you look at this and say, well, what's up with this um, epoxy type stuff here? Uh, evidently, that was no longer leaking and the customer opted to not have us uh, to collectively spend the money to fabricate a clamp to go over that because there was no leak there at that time. But we did address the leaks that were at the, the, the base of this, this pump motor. Um, this one just happened to have been spray painted gray in the course of doing the work. And this one just either hadn't been spray painted yet or, or was left in the, in just the shiny aluminum. Um, that's the only reason that, the, that they look a little bit different there. These no load tap changer operating shafts and handles, uh, the penetration where that operating rod goes into the, the transformer tank is another source of, of nuisance leaks that um, we have been called upon to address. And in this case here, we're able to take advantage of the faceplate to use a jack bolt to hold the, um, the little clamp box up tight against the transformer tank, fill that with sealant to, uh, to effectively contain that leak there without, without impacting the operation of this uh, no load tap changer um, operating mechanism. Uh, this was an interesting warranty repair that we got invited to uh, deal with um, a couple of years ago. This is on a huge uh, GSU transformer um, at a hydro plant up in uh, Canada. And um, you can imagine the logistics of getting this transformer assembled and shipped and delivered to this site. Uh, and then to discover that they've got a, a weld that failed inside this stiffener, this vertical stiffener here. There's a there's one little weld in the main tank that had uh, uh, developed a failure. And uh, as opposed to the manufacturer doing their traditional repair of taking this thing down, take it apart, ship it back to their facility for a major uh, rebuild and repair, uh, we were invited to, uh, to propose a fix form. And the idea was to, to since this stiffener is hollow inside, we drilled an access hole as close as we could get to where the actual leak was, filled it with sand up to this level here, and then filled the rest of that cavity with our with our sealant compound to uh, effectively arrest that leak um, to uh, uh, minimize them having to, to, to move this thing. So another successful job. 
and obviously we could have filled the entire stiffener with sealant, but pretty costly stuff. Sand worked just fine, it compresses down, and the area between the sand and the sealant uh, was not an issue that um, once cured and under pressure, it effectively kept the sealant compound up by that, that failed well, weld. Now, this was one of our cases where this utility had just gone through a regasketing on this transformer. Um, and upon completion of the regasketing, cries of anguish and despair, forehead banging uh, with the customer, like, yikes, what's happened here? Um, this butterfly valve, uh, the stem started to leak. They were, they were migrating oil up from the valve through the stem and um, making a nice mess. And obviously they didn't want to take this transformer all apart. The operating folks wanted to get this thing back. They were uh, already slightly behind schedule on their, their repair work and didn't want to wait any longer. So they reached out to us. And this little sketch here was actually uh, uh, put together by one of our techs during a, a collaborative conference call that we did with the, uh, with the customer and uh, identified that, that the oil was migrating up through that stem. Here is that completed um, uh, clamp on that, uh, that valve stem. Um, valve was fully operational. Transformer went back in service just a couple days late on their uh, major rebuild job um, after, after we, uh, we saved the day to, to fix this leak that, that uh, they discovered after the regasket. Dresser couplings, often used on, on transformers for piping, particularly some of the larger units, and uh, very easy to fabricate a clamp to put over a dresser coupling and fill it with sealant compound. And again, if you have to take that apart, clamp can be removed, sealant compound gently peeled away. And at that time, you may want to regasket that that coupling, but um, and or we can come back out and put the clamp back on for you. CT lead penetrations into the main tank of a transformer, another fun spot that can be a, a bit of a nuisance with the, with heating and aging. Uh, these materials can fail and and push oil out. We have fabricated clamps of PVC um, to. Um, uh, address these kind of leaks. So if uh, in, a, in an area where there's some uh, uh, possible electrical uh, clearance issues, we'll use a, a PVC material, typically about a four inch thick sheet to um, uh, address those leaks. Uh, and here you can see the two clamps are in place, folded together and pumping sealant compound into the one on the right. Oil circuit breakers, one of our common repairs um, is to um, uh, address is, is this, this gasket material between the porcelain and the steel on, on the, the, the high voltage oil circuit breakers out there. And the solution is to uh, put a, a, a clamp onto that, onto that area. And here's the clamp in place and the technician is pumping sealant compound into that clamp. You can see there's another clamp on uh, on this next, this bushing on the next pole over, that um, might be a work in progress still too, because it doesn't look like the pipe plugs are in. But a couple of, of bushings uh, were leaking on this one here. <coughs> the um, uh, voltage tap receptacle. This is a 138 kV uh, bushing. This is a, a bushing that obviously has been in service for a while, shows a little bit of age. Uh, breaker was commissioned in 1973, is what the uh, the customer tells us. You see, it's got a clamp on it already that uh, has been there for quite some time, still containing that leak. And uh, now they had a leak coming from the uh, the, uh, the voltage tap receptacle, and uh, we were able to determine that the uh, the gaskets highlighted in yellow is where the leak was, and we figured we could inject the sealant compound into that cavity through um, existing openings once we took that outermost cap off to effectively uh, uh, stop this leak form. Now we'll take a look at SF6 gas leak repairs on SF6 breakers. Of course, the first thing you gotta do with uh, SF6 is um, you, gotta, you gotta detect the leaks, being that it's odorless, colorless, um, you can't smell it, feel it, you have to use some sort of a special leak detection camera 
to uh, to identify the leaks, to find them, uh, as as first step to uh, to addressing these. Uh, these are two pictures of using actually an older style of of, of SF6 uh, detection camera that still is in use today. Our experience has been that this camera is a bit more reliable than some of the smaller handheld ones uh, because it's not affected by uh, by bright sunlight, et cetera. Um, so uh, this is actually a vendor that that we will call upon to come out and and shoot a breaker for us if, uh, if the customer doesn't have means of, of doing it on their own. And again, the leak repair technique for SF6 apparatus is to apply the external clamp. And here's an older style um, uh, Westinghouse circuit breaker. It's been in service for quite some time. And I believe these breakers are still in service out in California. We were just invited out to, to revisit this site where, where we've applied um, external clamps to, uh, to these bushes, you can see couple clamps in place, and you actually saw this picture once before too, but um, uh, two clamps in place on, on this bushing here, on these two bushings here. Uh, close up of where that, that surface is, again, like that oil breaker, uh, is that, that interface between the porcelain and the steel on the, these gas uh, bushings that, that develops the leaks. Here is with one half of the clamp in place over that, uh, that surface that, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're stopping the leak through. Uh, another clamp in place, this is actually on the base of a Westinghouse SFA breaker that uh, it's a it's a, a oil or gas filled column that again has a very similar uh, uh, interface there between the porcelain and the steel. And this is a very effective solution to uh, uh, arresting those uh, leaks. Of course, with, uh, with gas filled equipment, uh, the bushings are filled with gas and uh, under pressure and um, they can leak at the top as well as the bottom and uh, we have fabricated clamps to go on the top of uh, uh, the, the bushing caps the caps on these bushings to effectively keep the sf6 on the inside uh, a newer style siemens type breaker i, I highlight the full model uh, and type on this breaker here we have um, uh, one utility that we've done work for um, has a number of these on their system and they invited us to uh, to address the leaks on this style breaker. So I turned this into kind of a little detailed case study. A newer design single pressure gas breaker, but it's got a lot of, of flanges and surfaces that, that can be susceptible to um, uh, SF6 leaking that um, uh, we're, we're getting adapted at addressing on this. This specific one, it's that end bell, end bell flange that was leaking. The customer had used their leak detection tools and identified that they were seeing SF6 gas migrate out through these guide pin holes. Well, in reality, what had happened was there is a, uh, a gasket that runs just inside this bolt circle that um, was failing. And the gas was taking the path out through those um, uh, those guide pins. So the solution is to uh, fabricate a clamp to enclose this flange here. Um, bit of an adventure because there's a lot of conflicts uh, with that. I don't know if the, the little chat boxes are, are in the way here, but um, so the solution is to fabricate a clamp to enclose this flange here. Um, of course, the real challenge is there's all these, these, uh, these lobes, I got about the best way to describe them, where this pole is um, uh, uh, mounted to the, uh, uh, the frame that this breaker sits on. This is three photographs of the same, uh, the same pole where the leak is uh, that, uh, that you can see here. So the challenge was to come up with some kind of a design. I think it took us three visits to, to manually measure that, um, uh, that, that flange and determine um, how to come up with a clamp to put on there. Here is a 3D model of that, of the clamp design that we did come up with. Here's the actual clamp back from the machine shop being prepped to be installed on that, um, uh, on that, uh, on that flange. And you can see the, uh, the, the complicated cutouts that we had to make to accommodate those, uh, those lobes and such, the way that that breaker is mounted uh, on, that, on that structure. Three shots of the clamp in place and uh, work in progress. 
You notice we also did plug those guide pin holes and pump sealant compound into that area there to uh, to contain the leak. Um, the uh, the the uh, sealant bolts or nuts, I should say, were put on the back of the of the nuts and bolts and hold that um, that end bell in place to uh, eliminate the migration coming out through that also. So um, another successful repair. It was done on this style breaker. Uh, SF6 piping, some of the uh, particularly lower voltage um, gas breakers have, have this small um, tubing piping going to uh, pressure switches, alarms, gauges, et cetera. And, and we've experienced uh, leaks on, on some of this piping here. Solution is to fabricate a little uh, clamp box, fill that with sealant compound and um, uh, uh, effectively uh, contain those from, from leaking the atmosphere. GIS bus uh, has got a lot of flanges and uh, the solution there is to put a clamp over the, uh, the leaking flange and fill it with seal sealing compound to control those leaks. Now we're, we're drifting into a, a new technology that we're starting to dabble with here by utilizing a 3D scanner tool. Uh, to um, um, get uh, detailed uh, measurements and drawings of the various components and aid for uh, field measurement for leak seal clamp design. Um, and the 3D scanner drawings can be, the, the 3D scans can be in, uh, imported to uh, CAD systems so that we can use that to um, fabricate a clamp over that surface. Um, and the beauty of this is we can do this without making physical comp contact with the electrical components of the breaker. And in other words, uh, the, the possibility is that we can um, take measurements without getting an outage um, by using this tool uh, on those components that may be up in the air. A good possibility we could take this little scanning head there, put it on the end of a hot stick to get closer to uh, the tops of bushings, et cetera to uh, effectively um, uh, design and develop the clamps that are needed to, uh, uh, to contain the leaks. So that's kind of our story. That's my presentation for you. And um, I think the first question is, is that drill and seal an epoxy? How difficult is it to open that flange after the sealing process? Okay, we call it drill and inject. And uh, it's the exact same material that is used in the clamps um, and, and doesn't stick, is not, um, uh, and, and is very flexible. I don't know if you can see this. I have just a little, this is just a sample of, of the sealant material. Uh, and you can see it, it's flexible, much like uh, RTV bathtub caulk. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this was put into like one of those little Altoid mint tins to make this, um, uh, uh, to, to allow this to cure. So if you do have to take a flange off, uh, a radiator off, um, the gasket material is gonna be in there and, and should almost fall out. It, it should be uh, pretty much solid, like, um, like you saw in that where we took that clamp off that one bushing there. And without too much effort, you can easily peel that out of there and make that, that gasket groove nice and clean and either put an OEM uh, gasket back in there or um, have us come out and reshoot it once the transformer is, uh, is put back together. Okay, and then the follow-up question, is it difficult to remove the clamp later on? Um, typically, no. I mean, you've seen some of these where they're, they're pretty weathered out there, but, but again, too, the, any, any bolting on that same circuit breaker has been exposed to those same elements and uh, a good substation mechanic with a little bit of, of um, um, spray uh, that you can use. Um, uh, I'm having a senior moment. You know, the stuff that you can thread loosener, thread right. loosener kind of stuff yeah. to, uh, to, to bust through whatever uh, corrosion is on there and, um, and get those clamps off. I guess I'd say it should be no different than taking any other bolts out of, a, out of an aged transformer or circuit breaker. Right. Okay. Uh, next question. What is the low temperature limit for installation? 
I'd have to do a little bit of research to exactly figure that out. But um, um, into uh, um, we we need to keep the sealant above freezing. We'll heat the space um, to uh, for to do the work uh, as it's curing. And once it's cured, the temperature doesn't doesn't have any effect on it at the low end. And we do have a uh, what they call a high early uh, a fast cure type of sealant that we'll use in the colder weather. We'll warm it up in the vehicle and then pump it in and it will cure substantially faster in the cold weather. I'd have to uh, go through some of our detailed sheets and get back to who's ever asking that to, to give you the exact temperature values. But we do have, I do have 